Welcome. In this lecture, we would talk about Earth and Solar System, a very interesting topic. Here, our main focus would be understanding mainly about Sun, stars, their formation, their types, and their specific uh, behavior. So, let's begin with a general understanding about universe. Now, when we focus on universe, you might have heard about a very famous Arab tale, which says that the best sky is visible from the desert why the night of the desert is considered as one of the best places to have a star gazing or getting a view of the universe the simple reason is there is no pollution no traffic no fumes and you have a very clear vision of the universe that means you can view the galaxies view the constellations view the stars very clearly now this universe is a sum total of what is visible to us but not only what is visible to us which includes the sun star moon constellations but also the invisible matter now this invisible matter is called as dark matter note there is a difference between dark matter and dark energy we'll come to that later in this lecture as we move forward but to begin with whenever we talk about universe we understand that this dark matter which is the invisible part has neutrinos and these neutrinos have a mass of nearly 1.8 into 10 raised to power minus 5 microns and that is an unknown uh, particles which interact with each other now understanding the photons which are present in this invisible matter these photons have a density which is billion times more than hydrogen which is somewhere around 60 billion per centimeter cube now with such a high density of photons these photons are seen in uh, microwaves radio waves uh, x-rays then you have ultraviolet rays and even in visible rays, gamma rays. So these photons are found in each of those. One very important term we understand when we talk about the Big Bang Theory, which we would again discuss later in this lecture, is the term microwave background radiation. Now this microwave background radiation from the Big Bang shifted, the uh, basically red shifted all the way down to the micro wave band that means on a uh, on a graph where i am plotting power versus wavelength this is a curve that i would get which is similar to a black body radiation which would say that the peak power occurs somewhere at 1.26 millimeters of wavelength so again a very important thing that you must understand whenever we talk about stars sun as one of the stars right we need to understand how do we classify star so star is any object that has enough mass at a center to reach a temperature of 10 raised to power 6 kelvins or more. If it is small, it can last for a longer time and can be relatively dim. If it is big, it would burn rapidly and it would take 550 uh, to 500 million years to actually um, have it and blow it completely. Now, these stars are formed by two mechanisms sun as one of those so these are formed either by proton proton collision or they are formed by carbon cycle now what is the difference idea in each case is four hydrogen would combine to form a helium now under the proton proton which occurs at 15 into 10 raised to power 6 kelvin uh, in this proton proton collision sun is a good example where 91 percent of the total uh, energy is generated by proton proton collision the next is carbon collision here proton collides with the carbon now carbon already has six proton you have one more proton collision that takes place and this actually 
requires more energy and therefore is less popularly seen in most of the cases. So these two processes are really important and here when a nuclear reaction takes place what would happen high energy photon or gamma particles would interact with the free electrons and the energy would be released in a zigzag manner. These zigzag energy would reach the surface of the sun. But can you imagine how long will it take to reach the surface from the core to the surface of the sun. So there is a core, a radiative layer, a convective layer and then the photosphere. So it would take nearly 1 million years time for this photon to actually reach from the core of the sun to the surface of the sun because there is a continuous process of emission, absorption and re-emission that would occur. And this would be the timeline that would actually take place. Now, when we talk about sun, how does it work? The idea is very simple. In the beginning, there are two protons that combine. Positron is released and a neutron and a proton pair is formed. So this is neutron and this is proton. So four hydrogen, so one proton, one proton, one proton and one, one proton. So four hydrogen come together, right? What is formed is positron. So two positrons would be formed and one neutron proton pair is formed. Now this neutron proton pair is the hydrogen nucleus. Two such neutron proton pairs along with the proton combine and they form uh, a complex where we have two of the four protons and two neutrons, right? So there are four protons and two neutrons and what would be released is two proton and a helium. And this is how the fusion reaction actually takes place in the sun. So this fusion reaction which takes place in sun is really important. Why? I repeat again. Four hydrogen which are independently the protons. So four protons. Two protons when they combine energy is released. A proton neutron pair is formed and a positron is released free. Now this proton neutron pair along with the proton. So proton neutron pair along with the proton would form another complex and together they would form uh, a, a helium nucleus right. This helium nucleus which is H3 where there are four protons and two neutrons together would release a helium nucleus with two proton and two neutron and two extra protons would be released. And this reaction is what is the fusion reaction that takes place. So what is actually happening? There is a mass change of energy. So energy is converted to heat energy and there is the release of energy which occurs in this process. So sun Within the sun, we can say nearly 600 million tons, 600 million tons of hydrogen would change into helium every second. You can imagine the extent every second, 600 million tons of hydrogen would change into helium and neutrinos would be released. When neutrinos are released, these neutrinos would come to the earth and would reach the earth in 8 minutes and therefore we say that we get the light from the sun in 8 minutes. So what we obtain is neutrinos, right? I hope so far we are going clear. Now, similar to an hydrogen is the sun's spectrum where you see the variations in the color bands that are seen here. The next is the most interesting part, understanding the structure of the sun. So as I mentioned, there is the core. Next to core is the radiative layer. Next to radiative layer is the convective layer. Then you have the photosphere followed by chromosphere and the outermost is the corona, right? Let's understand each of those. Core has a diameter which is 25% of the total. Now, let me give you some basic information about core first. Core has a radius of 170,000 kilometers. It has a density of 160 gram per centimeter cube. The temperature is 15 into 10 raised to power 6 Kelvin. 
and this core is nearly 8.5 times as dense as the purest substance which is the pure gold and that is considered as one of the most dis densest material which is present so this core is nearly 8.5 times more dense than pure gold itself so with these characteristics of core one very important thing is core has regular fusion reaction that takes place at present we can say by mass 62% is helium and 38% is hydrogen for the core. Next to the core is the radiative layer. Now this radiative layer, the temperatures are already mentioned here. This radiative layer starts from 170,000 kilometers to around 590,000 kilometers. Here most of the process would take place through radiation as the name it is the radiative layer. 60% of the radius is formed by the radiative layer.